Hi everyone, my name is James Feeney. Welcome to or back to my channel. Today we are here for a bit of a walkthrough and a look at The Angel Tarot by Robert M. Place and Rosemary Ellen Guiley. So this is a deck that is out of print. I got my copy recently on eBay, and I thought that it would just be fun to have a look at it and go through it. This is one that I haven't really seen around too much. I know it's been out of print for quite some time, but I thought it would be nice to look at. It is a little bit of a different style of tarot, and I find it to be really interesting upon just my kind of cursory look at it. I haven't looked through it and um, gotten to know it so well, I haven't really fully dug into the guidebook, so this is just a bit of a walkthrough, but also a look through the cards. So we're going to look at all of the cards as well. So it came in this box. The cards and the deck were, uh, I mean, the, the cards and the book were in this box, and it was still wrapped. I got my copy, and it was still wrapped up and new, so I was the one to open it. Kind of had this weird structuring in here that I didn't think was so well suited to the cards, but... Um, yeah, and I know that this is one of Robert M. Place's first decks. I believe it was right after he published the, the first edition of the Alchemical Tarot, and then this came out shortly after. It's from 1995, I believe. At least that's what this card that came with it, this sort of title card, um, says. And I believe that the publisher at this time was different than the one he has now, which is, I believe, something like Hermes um publishing or something like that this one was was harper collins there are some really interesting differences in the production so there's this extra card which is really just actual construction paper it's not really laminated one side sort of has a coating to it and when i unwrapped this it, it was very strange it like reacted to the air in some way and it kind of just bowed like right in front of my eyes it began to bow now i've fixed that a bit through just laying it, placing a cloth on top, and then a book, and that's fixed the bow quite a bit. Not that that bothers me too much, but it was, it was like, it had bowed quite a bit. I'm going to use this card as an example, but it really just like, it was like almost like that, and um, it just happened when it reacted to the air. It was very, very strange, and I will say that these cards are extremely thin. I'm guessing I'm going to go into more of the technicalities to start. Um, they're extremely thin. It's almost like just normal paper that's been laminated. Honestly, I've seen regular printer paper laminated that feels thicker and more sturdy than this cardstock. They're high, high gloss, it feels like, um, and they kind of stick together a bit, not too badly. Um, they look like they were cut in a very rough way. It's very weird. It's almost like these little fibers of lamination and paper sort of uh, are coming off, and it's almost like pilling it's very strange, and um, the lamination doesn't seem to be applied that excellently. There's even this one part where there's some extra lamination hanging off this card. I don't want to tear it off because I'm scared that it will rip the card or it might rip some more of the lamination off, so I'm leaving it for now. But um, yeah, it's so interesting to see the deck, um, the production quality, at least this exact copy is not that good, um, and I received it new. These are the backs, which I happen to really like. There's this sort of old school, old school playing card style or old school Marseille feel to these backs. At least that's how it feels for me. And of course you get the, the nice angel wing, so it does feel quite angelic. Now, although this is the angel tarot, I wouldn't say that this at all coincides with our ideas of modern um, Abrahamic uh, religions uh, or like Judaism and Christianity as they as they are now. This is more so that esoteric, that mysticism that was uh, almost, I, I don't want to say it's pre, uh, I mean, it's pre-modern Abrahamic religions. This was kind of, it's more um, that Enochian, Enochian, however you, you want to say it, it's it's a bit alchemical. Um, it does actually go into the Enochian or Enochian themes within this book. So it's more of that Christian or Judeo-mystic style than it is actually um, closely tied to to modern ideas of those religions, so just keep that in mind. Uh, first, I guess we will we'll go through the cards and then we'll have a look at the guidebook. 
So this is a, a standard 78 card tarot. It gets very pippish in the minors, and uh, yeah, so we'll just go through it. And I will note that as far as the majors go, they're all angels of some sort. Some are fallen angels, some are angels, or not even, I would say, beings that many of us or some of us would associate with being an angel. And then there are some that are fallen angels, which we clearly don't or know to be, I would say, or differentiate um, to some extent from from the traditional. I don't know if I'm making sense. You'll see what I you'll see what I mean. So we'll start with the fool. So yeah, I believe Abraxas is a fallen angel and is considered in in some traditions, I could be so off, is considered uh, a demon. the majors now we're into the minors and there's a sort of uh, I'll, uh yeah they really just are pip style they're not really in that marseille fashion and form they are more so i would say they appear to be in the the style of playing card suits so we have hearts spades uh, clubs and diamonds Diamonds being pentacles, clubs being um, wands, spades being swords, and these hearts being cups. And you can really see those, of course, in the aces, where the thing, uh, the suit itself will really be depicted. There's also the twos, which you will see really depict the suit. Um, there's not much written in the guidebook on the miners at all, actually, but as far as I can tell, they, they do get descriptions that mirror the Rider Waite Smith very closely. So uh, I'm not seeing this as being one where he intended for more of that playing card style divination. It really does feel very Rider Waite Smith esque based on the guidebook. Um, it doesn't even really seem very Marseille like based on the way he writes about the cards. So that's interesting to note. We'll look at the guidebook in a second, but we'll go through the minors. Uh, the courts are actually really beautiful and interesting, so they're a nice highlight. They all are very unique.
takes us through the minors. Now, I think that they're a bit boring, I won't lie. I'm not usually one for Marseille or even Pip-style decks. I do prefer to have a little bit more to go on. Not necessarily a scene, but just something that kind of makes each one different and more than just the the number of the thing that it is, like the number of cups or the number of uh, hearts in this instance. I know, for example, with Marseille that there's a rhyme and a reason to the grouping and the way that the items are placed, but I do prefer a little bit of something more, whether that be differences in color and layout. I don't really actually like full scenes, but it is sometimes nice to have something going on, like the Thoth, uh, for example. But you may have noticed that in a few of the suits, I believe it's in the clubs and the the clubs and the diamonds, no, the clubs and the spades, that there are occasions where there's a difference in, say, hair color of the angels. Like, you'll get one redhead amongst, amongst um, three blonde ones, and that happens a few times in this suit, but it's not on every card. You get it again with the seven, which I found to be really interesting. I couldn't find any rhyme or reason to that in the guidebook, but there might be one, I just haven't seen it. And that happens again in the clubs with a few of the cards. Differences in the hair color. So I thought that that was interesting to note, but it's also interesting that that doesn't actually happen at all in the hearts and in the diamonds. There's no differences between the angels at all in any of the, any of the cards. So that's fun, or funny, I should say. So that takes us through the cards. Now let's have a little bit of a peek at the guidebook, which I think is actually an amazing guidebook. I mean, Robert M. Place is involved in this project, and um, so, of course, there's going to be some interesting things going on in the guidebook. He has quite a few really great books out there. Um, I will say that I know that he's the artist of this, and I tend to think that a lot of the writing seems to be his own. Um, so he is the, the sole artist, and then it was a com combined effort of his and Rosemary Ellen Guiley for the guidebook. Although I will say, based on what I've read of uh, Robert and Place's work, this book seems to be entirely written by him, at least it, it sounds that way, the writer's voice does. So I'm wondering where it is that Rosemary Ellen Guiley even came in in regards to this project. Um, that's not, I'm not trying to say that anything underhanded or that she really didn't have a role to play, but um, maybe she was more of an informant, but the writing style and the voice seems to be very much in alignment with um, what I know Robert M. Poise's writing style to be, so that's interesting. Um, so we have the table of contents. So there are a few chapters leading up to the cards themselves where we get to know about um, the angels in more of a mystic way, so there's things like, let's see, we get the mystery of the tarot. Let's see, what was this first part? The introduction, which gives us a little bit of background in the what came together in order to make this deck sort of thing, which is actually pretty interesting. The mystery of the tarot. So a little bit on that. We start to get occultists discover tarot. So there's some history and there's an alchemical connection. I mean, it feels like it wouldn't be a Robert M. Place work without some tie to alchemy. Uh, we get a bit on Jung and synchronicity playing a role in this deck or in tarot overall, archetypes in the tarot. So this is a nice little actual book on tarot overall, but then we start to get into the realm of the angels. So you get a few chapters of more of that mystic Enochian, Enochian um, rundown on the ideas of angels. So we get um, Judaic angelology, Christian angelology, the hierarchies of the angels, which I thought were really interesting. I gave that a little bit of a look. So we have like the, the seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, and archangels. And then the archangels get a little bit of a, each one because they have very specific names gets a section. So we have like Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, so they all get a bit, which is, and a lot of them, of course, feature in the major. So you, it's almost like you get a little bit more on a major because you get to see, I guess, just a bit on them as a character or a being. You also get things like Enoch's trip to heaven. So that's where we start to see that Enochian, Enochian, however you say it, connection in here. 
and I believe, well, I won't even try to make guesses because I'm not so well versed in, in Enochian, um, I guess, traditions or lore, but I believe he was a human who became or circumvented death and became an angel, and um, that's some of the what goes into the, all of that. It could be so off. <laughs> Um, we have Gnostic angelology. So these are various ways and um, tr traditions, views of angels and how they would interact with them and the lore and myth, um, mythos sort of there. We get the appearance of angels. How many angels are there? Angel gender, which I thought was interesting, how they are sort of androgynous and exist outside of gender, um, but that their manifestation, um, manifestation to us is... Uh, may choose a gender as part of their manifestation to us. thought that was really, really interesting, actually, that he added that in there. Um, how many angels? The rainbow bridge to higher consciousness. So you're getting these, like, more high vibe, very interesting chapters on things that I think are actually so pertinent to the tarot and set this deck apart. So this book, I think, is really valuable. So if you do, by some chance, stumble across this deck or seek it out, I would say that the guidebook is pretty essential, at least if you want to really make this an experience and to dive into it. I think that the guidebook is essential. It's small, but there's so much in here. Um, so we have a, a section on wings, halos, beauty, how to work with the tarot, asking for a guide. So there's some specific ways that you can go about working with this deck that set it apart. And uh, Robert M. Place really goes into it in these sections. So asking for a guide, spiritual protection, meditating with the cards which i think is interesting there's spreads there's a few really cool unique spreads you get the celtic cross of course which is a given um the celestial ladder you can there's a little bit on self-designing spreads we get the yes or no the timeline Raphael's path archangel square those are all really fun and then we get the major arcana and they all get about anywhere from well some of them get quite a bit it seems like two pages but some get like I would say on average they get about two pages or the front and the back of a page. And then we get back to the minors, which basically just gives us the equivalence of hearts to cups, spades to swords. So this little bit at the back, and there's not much said here on each one. You get about like the three, so it does take the numerological approach right here. And then we move into the actual suits, where you'll get a little bit on each card within a suit not too much, basically a sentence or two, but they do appear to be more Rider Waite Smith based on what I see here. Um, yes, so that's how it feels at least. So that takes us through the guidebook. I think the guidebook is really great, so I did want to touch upon it. Um, so yeah, oh, here, if you want a little bit of a synopsis of the deck, let the wisdom of the angels bring you good fortune, firmly grounded in Kabbalistic, alchemical, and Christian mysticism, the angels, uh, the angels Tarot companion book soars to the heavens and reveals the mysteries of the tarot, as well as the celestial wonders of the kingdom of angels. Rosemary Allen Guiley and Robert M. Place, um, Robert Michael Place clearly describe each card in the major and minor arcana, including their relationships with the hierarchies of benevolent and fallen angels and their key attributes and meaning, and show how the entire deck interrelates to form a complete system for powerful personal insight, foresight, and divination. So that's pretty interesting. So I hope that a little peek at this deck was something that was interesting and fun for anybody watching. Let me know what you thought. And if you have this deck and have worked with it, what you thought of it. I hope you are all well. Like and subscribe if this was nice and fun for you. And until next time, bye.